let's be upstanding as we honor the grace of God upon this man of God, Prophet Manton Thomas. Can we celebrate him as he brings the word of the Lord to us? Come on, go ahead and celebrate Jesus for him. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. You're welcome, man of God. Everybody lift your hands and let's say thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do right here. Everybody say thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do right here. Can I hear you say it? Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do right here, right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 You can have your seats. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, I'll just say this. I'm way, way higher in the spirit in reality right now in God than where we are right here in the natural. It's very heavy what God is doing. I, I had a visitation this morning and um, I'll just go ahead and deliver it. There's a lot to say. The Lord spoke many things. I have an assignment here. I'm going to just do it. I'm just going to go right into it. It's a house building assignment from the Lord. Now, I'm going to go way past the experience of what you see or feel or know right now because God is going to birth something so, so amazing. And, uh, boy, I feel, I feel the weight of it so strong it's almost hard to get into it. Let me, let me, get, let me go into it. I had a visitation from the Lord this morning, and the Lord spoke a very lengthy uh, series of words. Now, we need to thank God for this place, right? Hello? We thank, hi, hi too, hi, hi. Hiya, hiya, hiya. I, we thank God for this place, but I saw something this morning. I saw a beautiful sanctuary building. Can you lift your hands for this ministry, for this church? And I want to break some things that have tried to hold it back. And the Lord is going to throw fire down upon every opponent, every opposer, every hater, every opposition every other voice can you say hallelujah everybody that's against what god wants to do we're going to have free course you know the scripture says the scripture says let the word of god have free course pray that it does remember paul the apostle was telling the people said we were coming somewhere but satan hindered us so sometimes there's things that are in the way in god's mind things should have been way further along than they are but it's the will of evil men demons uncooperative people even traditions and cultures and all kinds of things like that that have just held back the ways of what god wants to do you know the lord said your traditions make the word of god of none effect can you believe that anything at all can make the word of God of none effect. I almost, you know, years ago, I said, I almost can't believe it. 
How can anything stop your word? Well, that's one example in the scripture. I'll give you another one. There's another one that says, the Lord said, <laughs> he said, because of your unbelief, I can't do any miracles here. When he was at Nazareth in Mark chapter 6. And he went down to Capernaum and miracles. Thank you, apostle. I'm on, I'm on it. Thank you. The miracles begin to happen down at the place where there was belief. Can I tell you a major obstacle, and I'm speaking prophetically, I'm under a very heavy anointing. When I came in, all I could do was sit down and just, because I'm somewhere else. Lift your hands right now. I am way further beyond where we are in the natural. I had a visitation from the Lord this morning for about an hour, and I'm going to read to you what the Lord said, though I've just typed it into my phone. It's a very lengthy document, but I'm going to read it to you what the Lord said. But you know, the traditions of men, Jesus said, would make the word of God of none effect in one place. And then in Mark chapter 6, he, he couldn't do any miracles in the place of Nazareth because, because of their unbelief. Can I tell you, I feel it in the air. I, Apostle, I feel it in the spirit. My discernment is up. I'm seeing it in the, in the, in the spirit realm. There's a lot of unbelief that has been against us. Uh, and I want to tell you and prophesy right now, come on, lift your hands, somebody, that God is breaking it from today. And the fact that we're foreigners, us two friends here are foreigners, they're not going to stop our work. In fact, we're going to have the biggest work beyond what many of the locals have because we're truly anointed of God and sent of God to be here. Archbishop confirmed it last night. I almost cried a little bit. I thought, sometimes you feel like it's a mistake. All the warfare. What is it? He said, it's no mistake. Uh, God is building it here. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Be comforted, my son. Uh, did you hear him say it? And he told me something so great here. Uh, it's a short word. He said, Thomas Manton, the struggle is over. God has given you a new heart, which means a lot of things. And then he's going to send you to all the great men of the world. That was a word of elevation and promotion. And did I not speak it here in this pulpit two hours before he came? The message title of what I spoke yesterday, I titled it Trustworthiness, Faithfulness, Provision and Promotion, if we can title it. Now, because of the unbelief, many don't show up. Because of the like wagging of the tongues and wagging of the heads, many don't show up. But the Lord says that day is coming to an end right now. Can somebody say praise the Lord? I saw a building this morning. God, I feel the power of God here. I saw a great property. I saw a building. And I'm going to read it to you what the Lord said verbatim from the Father. I'm not a small boy. I'm in the office of the prophet, okay? I'm running in my lane here in the authority of the governmental realm of the office of the, po the, the, the prophet. And your prophet, prophet, your papa prophet here has come to speak to you today. Lift your hands up right now. How privileged, how privileged, how privileged we are that God would speak to us. Some people sitting there looking, are you okay? Can you lift your hands up to God? If Jesus Christ stood here, I'm wearing Chinese silk that was made for royalty and Italian designer shoes and designer watch, cufflinks, courtesy, Rolex. Amen, all of that. The fabric just for this cost about 60000 This is the fabric they used to make for royals in China. So what? King Solomon in all the array of his splendor and glory meant nothing when Jesus showed up. If he were to stand here right now, what would you do? Would you sit there like this? You see the church thing that got on us? Everybody lift your hands. I command you. I command you. I, I'm not playing with you. I'm not playing. I command you. Lift your hands to the boss because he's here right now. Catherine Coleman would come out on the stage and say, quiet, everybody. Benny Hinn would shout, you over there. You, you. All these are shouting. The king has walked into the place. And I'll tell you, that's where we are right now. The Father is going to release something here that's going to be so amazing. 
It's going to break loose everything. I want to I want to deal with this thing before I go a minute further. Apostle, that's why I needed you to be here. Let's agree together. We break this thing that's been against foreigners in Kenya in Jesus' name. I prophesy against it. Every opponent will fall and every proponent will rise. At this altar and at this place and touching the grace of this, the anointings that are here, God is going to prosper people and raise them to heights they've not seen before. And even the testimony of the watch and things like that, that's just the one thing. It's going to be more like that. And the word will go out everywhere and people begin to come to see who will, the God of this man, Apostle John Good News, the God of uh, myself, Prophet Thomas Matthew, the, the God of uh, how are these things happening? But God says they're going to become a normal thing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have a lot to cover. I saw the house of God. Let me read you what God said. Are you ready? You see that thing about unbelief? You see the thing about hatred from other preachers? You see that, that demon of cultural stupidity that keeps people back from receiving the power of God? Jesus said you have to become like a child and just begin to, just begin to receive what I say verbatim and take it. You know, I could feel in the spirit, Apostle, when you first started, when you were standing there, you first started to talk about the watch. I could feel in the air. Some people are like, I don't even believe that. Right? They couldn't see it. But God says you're going to see it with your eyes. And I want to prop. I'm way beyond where we are in the natural right now. I'm telling you, since this morning, I'm under the hand of God. I mean, for the last three hours or so, I... <sighs> okay, thus saith the Lord. Are you ready? I see the house of God for the apostle, and I see the land, and I see the property, and I see the splendor and the elegance in the place. Lift your hands. This will happen. God says he'll provide for all of it. And this will be known as the millionaire's house. Lift your hands. The millionaire's house. Let's give it a, 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 a cheeky new, new addition to the name. The house of millionaires. How many know you're one? Even you young people, you're going to start to do business from when you're babies. Lift your hands, all you kids over here. And say, Lord, touch me. You don't have to be an adult to get blessed. And the Lord said, but I saw beautiful decorations in the house. I saw the land. I saw the gates. I saw the parking. And the Lord said, there'll even be separate buildings for different functions. I even saw a banquet hall where you have tables set up where you don't have to dismantle the altar in the church to have like a function where people can come for that for different events. I saw the round tables. I saw the decor on the tables. I saw the chandeliers on the, ce the ceiling. I saw all of it. Praise the Lord. And I see people prospering that are coming to connect. Again, I've spoken it already how God's going to deal with the devil and the enemy. Lift your hands. Any opponent of this ministry is being ashamed, disgraced, and crushed. And if they want to continue to fight with us, and I include myself because we're brothers together, we're, they're, they're going to be, they're going to be even, even made to perish. Now, I don't have any business saying that unless I can. Isaiah 41 11 is the verse. Write it down. I don't have time. You'll look for people again that thought there was somebody that wanted to oppose an anointed man, and you'll not find them. They'll be gone. I saw people prospering in ways that are just beyond, the, the beyond anything we can even imagine. This is the day of mega churches. This is the day of the mega church. And this apostle here and this prophet here and other connected people in this grapevine are going to be the ones to build the greatest works in this land. And that demon that is sought so arrogantly that they can abuse foreigners and say, ah, who's that guy from there? They shouldn't come here and do this. The devil is a liar and so are they. And they're already falling. God says, don't you know my judgment has already hit many people that have done these things over the years. They're even gone. They've gone off the scene. Or they're, or they're in tr tremendous decline. I saw people learning the principles of business and learning how to 
talk and speak in a commanding voice on how to begin to prosper. Let me, let me continue. Things and situations that seemed impossible will be advanced now by God's favor. And Apostle, I saw something unusual. I saw a confession board of, of script that you would write that people can make a confession of powerful declarations of things all as the church, all as the people in, in one accord. Amen. You can write that script. And uh, the, the Lord said, oh, God. The Lord said, it's going to be the day I'm going to give my people cars and vehicles. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord if you want one yourself. And, and I want to speak very practically for a minute. God's going to give practical wisdom on how you can get a car very cheap. Uh, and you don't have to go to the mechanics and get ripped off by these shops and pay high. Someone said, how will I pay for the fuel? How will I pay for the insurance? How will I pay for the maintenance? Stop all that in your mind. Find the Jewel Cali man who's honest. I know a few. You can ask me and get somebody that's going to fix your car, put a little tint on light tint on the windows, put your music system in there. Now you don't have to be out in the elements. You'll be driving your car. Even if it's a little car, you say, I want a Range Rover. Stop it. You're a child in the realm of cars. Grow a, a while first. Lift your hands. God can give you any car, a nice little car. You could be driving. It's better than taking public. I prophesy against this public thing where people are always out. By the time they get to anywhere, they're already stressed. They're already messed up. Lift your hand and say, that's for me. I'm going to have my own vehicle. I see parking cars, apostle, all over the place. You'll be all around and around and around and around. God's going to begin to show and give you wisdom. It was said yesterday, you need wisdom when you have the power of God. Archbishop was saying it. When you have the power of God, you need wisdom. God's going to give wisdom on how to get these things. Say a big amen. I saw the banquet hall. I saw children's church. Hello. I saw the youth center. I saw the children's church. I saw the beautiful offices. I saw the sanctuary so elegantly built. Now, I don't want to tell you how many seats it's going to have, even though I have some insight. But if I say a number, you might say, well, prophet, that's too little, OK? There's more than that. So I want to let, let it be an underscore and you fill in the blank of how many zeros you want to put. Lift your hands. It's going to be a big church. This church is going to be a huge church. Uh, I'll say it again. This church is going to be a very huge church. Uh, Apostle, this church is going to be a very huge church. Not a medium church, not a small church, but one of the mega churches in the land. God is going to begin to elevate you to the point where anything small, it's just like it falls off. There's no way for it even to become a, 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 a tangible long-term thing. Can you say amen? I even saw chandeliers from the ceilings. Praise the Lord. I even saw the decor of, of, of designer carpets with patterns and designs. I see designs on the wall. I saw things moving. And amen. And the Lord said, the, the Lord showed me this this, this this morning. I saw big screens, big LEDs, not these little TVs, big, huge from China, wherever you're going to get them from, and put them on the whole wall and having the thing going on either side. The flow is just going to be absolutely astounding. The platform, I saw the platform, the pulpit, such elegance, such power. And the Lord says this, Apostle, no plastic chairs in my sanctuary. No plastic chairs, not even one. You'll take them and give them away later. Somebody clap your hands. So I'm going to go, woo! Now the Lord says this business, realm of business enterprises, apostle, business enterprises. I am, I'm going to do astounding things in the realm of wealth creation. And God says the representation of what I'm going to build here with you is going to be so great that people will want to come from around the world to see and behold it. 
Everybody lift your hands. Amen. Let's stay focused here, please. Thank you. I saw expansion into television in the media. I saw more media that will go around the world. I saw the spirit of excellence that will be unparalleled around here. The spirit of excellence, administration that will be beyond what you can even ask or think. The Lord says, get ready now. You're going to see my favor in realms of this. God says, and God says you're going to build it here. It's always been in the back of our minds, and I can relate as a foreigner, that you wonder, is it really better to do it somewhere else? The Lord says, I'm going to settle this issue now in this season of time to let you know that Nairobi, Kenya is the place of the headquarters for Africa. Now you can have a branch on the west side in Nigeria, you can have one up in Europe, you can have some over in America, you can have somewhere in the Far East and out there, praise the Lord. Uh, but you, right here in Nairobi, Kenya, is the house, it is the place called there. And God says, I'm going to have you to build it here under my mighty hand, says the Spirit of the Lord. Hache konda, hache konda, sandele si kalaya. I prophesied to you as God's servant. The Lord spoke to me recently and said this. And he just released me to tell the people like from last week, the week before. It's a very recent word. God said, tell the people, know this, Nairobi, Kenya will become the New York City of Africa. Somebody shout if you want to see it happen. This is the place. The Lord says, corruption, I'm going to attack it. Evil, I'm going to attack it. Infiltrators. I was in Wiki the other day, right over here. Wiki, Kasarani. And I stood, the videos on my YouTube channel. I stood and prophesied, and the Lord spoke judgment. Do you know the whole place was flooded out, was getting flooded out. I don't understand that. I, I didn't want that to happen because I, I feel for innocent people. But, you know, sometimes God, you know, things, weather patterns can change. Things can strike. And I hope people, the Lord said that the realm of occultism over there, even preachers that are false, that are deceiving people, and they want to fight within the church. Another great work, movement that's going to happen is unity. Unity is going to happen in the house of God. Amen. Say praise the Lord. Where there's unity, I command my blessing. Now, the, the house of God here that God is going to help have you to build is going to be so magnanimous that people are going to go past all of their cultural traditions or mentalities or mindsets or demons or whatever it is, and they're going to want to come here. Amen. And I saw people from the international community, like flying in to Nairobi to visit with the apostle for him to pray for them and bring large gifts and things like that and connect under the apostolic grace. I saw it. It's going to be on that level. How many know it's not there yet, but it's going to be there? And I'm, I'm there in the spirit, but we want to bring it forth into the realm now of the natural. Can you say hallelujah? Now I'm going to have this typed out and I'll have to give this to you in print. Again, the Lord says, a luxurious atmosphere will be here to the point that it'll even scare some people. Some people will feel like maybe they're too poor to come here. But the Lord said if they'll come in and sit down on the seats, they will begin to be made rich. Lift your hands. This is going to be the house of millionaires, the house of prosperity, the millionaire's house. And the Lord says that the word will go and be noised abroad far and wide. Oh, there's so much here. My Lord. More people in Nairobi are going to begin to come here. Before that happens, you're going to have a space problem here. I don't know if you can bust this wall, this glass wall, and move it there. You're already thinking about it. Oh, yeah, I didn't know. And then have more chairs to go far out, and then you park on the sides. As far as you can go, where the goats are. You know the goats will, you'll have to move the goats away there. The goats will have to move away a little bit. Lift your hands, because people are coming. 
And God says when it's time for elevation and promotion, nobody can stop it. It doesn't come from the north. It doesn't come from the south. It comes from the Lord himself. And he's putting you up now. The Lord said this is the time of harvest, a season of harvest, a season of harvest time. Now, I want to say something else as a sign in the world. We, we came over here. There's still some clouds over this Kasarani. Can we rebuke them? Because the crusade is coming up. Amen. And I believe Dr. Paul and Neche will, you know, the atmosphere will change and shift from the region because there's some very evil things that go on over here. But on the other side of the city, my side of the city and where I preached last Sunday, God had me prophesy last Sunday in a great church, huge church, that the weather would stop, the rain would stop. Today, the sun is bright, the sky is blue. It's never happened before. You see what's happening. The word of the Lord is coming to pass. Now, that's a sign the same way that I'm speaking that to telling you about that is the same way these other things will happen. Lift your hands. Let's pray. Now, your environment again. I want to talk about your environment for a minute. For two seconds. Your environment. Lift your hands. My environment needs to change. Oh, yes. I also saw, thank you, Lord. I also saw people moving residences to better houses. Lift your hands. Where you're living now should be very temporary. How many know by the hand of God you could take the next step? I even see you looking at furniture and decor and new friends, even new friends and new situations, new environments, new business and things like that. And you don't have to, uh, you know, uh, consult with the future date on it. It's going to happen right now. Lift your hands. Everybody lift your hands right now. Father, I prophesy over this whole entire congregation, anyone that's connected with the glory realm, anybody that's connected with our apostle, that, Father, that they're going to be touched by this grace to begin to prosper. They're going to come out of poverty. They're going to come out of lack. They're going to come out of the things the way they've been. And the Lord says, I'm going to begin to cause your, the fire of heaven to come upon you. Lift your hands right now. Receive the touch, even from today. I see miracles happening from today. Yes, Lord. From today, the Lord says, I'm bringing miracles forth. Many of you are going to get new cars. Cars are just going to appear in your life. Vehicles to drive. New friends. Uh, new friends is going to be a really big miracle. And also, uh, new houses, new places to live. Lift your hands. Promotion and upgrade. When it comes upon the headset man, it comes upon the whole house. When the, when the anointing and the oil came upon the head of Aaron and flowed down the head, down to the beard, down to the body in Psalm 133, everybody got blessed. When David got blessed, Psalm 35, 27, the whole place got blessed. And God said, I want all of my servants to prosper. Lift your hands right now. Apostle, can you come and stand with me here? Shoko Rabbi. Everybody stand on your feet right now. I'm not done. I'm not done. But I'll pause it here. What I, what, I, what, I, what I got from the Lord this morning, I'll put it in print and send it to you. Oh, I love you, man. God is really going to manifest this. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Are you ready to come out from where you've been? Now, I want to give you one more admonition. If you're here, be here. Stop going everywhere. Watch the hand that touches you because that hand could be a filthy hand. Some preachers have made covenants with other things and they consult other things and they do other evil things. And the problem, some of the problems people have had in their life is because of the hand that was laid upon them. The Lord asked you this question, which hand touched you? God said, I'm also bringing people into a realm of holiness and consecration unto him where you're going to begin to say, I can't do what I did before. I can't be with those kind of people. Stay away from me. The Bible says, touch not the unclean thing and have no company. Amen. With the evildoers. Lift your hands right now. God is separating people. You may say it's too hard to live clean. No, it's not. It's too beautiful to live clean. It's, it's holiness unto the Lord means you become one with him. Lift your hands right now. One, I want to give you a, a, a two, like, really key like miracle prayers number one is first john 5 14 and 15 it says when you ask things according to his will he will grant them unto you next in first john 1 9 the bible says confess your sin to the lord and then he will forgive you and then cleanse you from all unrighteousness this is a prayer you should pray every day let's do it right now father any sin that i've done say it loud any sin that i've done whether i committed it or whether it's something I was supposed to do that I didn't do, 
forgive me right now. I will not sin again. Sin will not have dominion over me. Poverty is the offspring of the father Satan and the mother sin coming together. The curse of poverty, but the blessing of prosperity is for the holy. It's for the people that stand righteously. Lift your hands right now and say, Lord, let your blood cleanse me from every problem, every curse, uh, every witchcraft, uh, every wrong word, uh, everything that's been done against me, any wrong hand that ever touched me. Get it out of me right now in Jesus' name. I'm your holy vessel. I'm your righteous warrior. I'm your servant, and I am to be blessed. Now, Apostle said something to me that was amazing. Yeah, all right. And I want to thank you in advance in Jesus' name. Let's lift our hands and pray in the spirit. Shut your hands out toward our Apostle right now and say, Lord, I tap the grace. Say, Lord, I'm going to drive a new car. Say, Lord, I'm going to live in a new house. Say, Lord, I'm going to have new great friends. Say, Lord, I'm going to build businesses. Say, Lord, I'm going to prosper for your own glory. Say, Father, I'm going to cause my life, you and me together, to succeed and to go forward now in the greatest dimensions I've ever imagined. Now, pray day and night for the manifestation of the land, the property. Yes. I saw the gates. I even saw the gates. I saw the gates with the insignia on it. I saw the protocol. I saw the, the costume, the decor of the servants. It should be like a house of Solomon. God said there should be no limit to how far you can go. You're covered. We have archbishop. We have others. We'll have friends in government. Amen. Nobody can touch us again. Nobody can touch us. Nobody can stop this thing that God Amen. is doing. Lift your Hallelujah. hands right now. Thank you, Lord. Lift your Thank hands right you, now and receive the touch of heaven. Thank you, Lord. Promotion Thank you, Lord. is coming. Amen. It's coming today. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, more later. I'm not done, but more later. I love you. I love you. Honor to the servants of God everywhere that are here. God bless you. I love you. Can you blow me a kiss? Do you love me? Can I have some love up here? Give some to the apostle. Can you blow a kiss this way? All right. Can you blow one to Jesus right now? Give one to Jesus. He's the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the fairest of 10,000. The king of kings and the Lord of lords. Go ahead and celebrate the Lord. Awesome God, awesome God, amen. Now, how many of you love the man of God? <laughs> this man of God has been in this country. When did you come here, 2007? Since 2000. I first came for an event in 2000 at the KICC and God had me prophesy a new government in Kenya. When Daniel Arap Moy was the dictator for 24 years and the government people told me, and I was on my way to the airport, said, Prophet, this is not America. This is a third world African nation under a dictatorship. The government has people in these meetings and, and he was trying to like shake me up a little bit. I looked at him and I started to laugh. And I said, do you think that was me talking? I had flown down from London to do this meeting. 10,000 people were there, thousands outside. I dropped the atomic prophecy. We left and flew out. Within a year, the, the government began to, you know, change. I'm gonna say it in a polite way. And then the new government was called for. The prophecy went out in 2002, became viral. And then I came back in 2004. We did Uhuru Park, uh, Nio Stadium, big crusades. And then I came back in 2007 and the power of God hit the whole city and a revival erupted here. I'm telling you, it's amazing. And that's like 24 years now going on. Wow. The track record of my interaction with the beloved nation of Kenya. Hallelujah. Wow, wow, wow. That's amazing. I have had the testimonies of Prophet Thomas Manton, his prophecies and the fulfillment of those prophecies. God has anointed this man of God. And I have seen various places where the Lord used him to speak over the people and the results that followed after. And I am excited that the Lord has given him a word 
not only for the ministry, not only for the man of God, but for every one of you. I'm really excited about it. Hallelujah. Just in case you didn't hear, because we are so much pressed with time, so I'm under pressure. We have so much to do, but I'm under the pressure of time. Just in case you didn't hear clearly what he said, apart from describing the kind of, you know, extraordinary edifice that the Lord is building for himself here, he spoke about your promotion, about your prosperity, about the fact that some of you are going to change your houses, some of you are going to buy cars that will be easy for you to maintain. Hallelujah. So much, so much prophecy. While I was standing there, this is what came to my spirit. Amen. Now, from tomorrow, we will start praying over those prophecies. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, no joke at all. No joke. Glory to God. So, we are declaring seven days of prayers. If you want, you can fast. If you are not able to fast, it's alright. But, Every day we will, apart from Tuesday that we will be here, we'll be on Zoom. Is that all right? Every day we'll have one hour prayer interaction. Lord, bring your word to pass. Lord, bring your word to pass. That's the, the first instruction that the Lord has given to me. Now, secondly, prophet, please, can you come back here? Secondly, i like us to sow into this prophetic word. You are sowing for your car. You are sowing, you're sowing for your new house. You are sowing for the prosperity that the Lord is bringing to you that he spoke about. And i like you to drop it to him on his feet. It's not for the church. It's not for me. It is to the prophet himself. Is that clear? Now, if you are smart, you will do that. If you love the word that the Lord has released and you believe, he said, believe the Lord your God, you shall be established. Believe his prophet and ye shall prosper. So it's time to sow into, into your own prophetic manifestation. I am also going to do the same. The ministry will do the same on behalf of, on behalf of the ministry. Amen. But if you connect yourself to the word that has been released today, I'd like you to come here. If you have it on phone, you will send it directly to his number. If you have it cash, bring it here quickly. And you're sowing a seed that is befitting of the prophet. You have 5,000, you have 20,000, you have 1,000. The very best you have, it's time for you to release it into this prophetic word because I want to hear the testimonies. I will call him back here and say, man of God, come and see what the Lord spoke through you. It has come to pass. How many of you are ready to testify? All right. You're not moving. I'm waiting for you. Bring the seed. Bring it. Bring it. Prophet, receive it. The Lord bless you. Drop the sow a special seed into this into this prophetic anointing. Sow a special seed into this prophetic anointing. It is done. It is done. It is done. Those of you who are going to do with phone. Yes. Can you, can we display your number on the screen? Zero, seven, nine, two, zero, seven, zero, six, one, six, four, one, nine, one. Media, did you catch that? Zero, seven, zero, six, one, six, Good. They got it. All right. So the number is on the screen if you are giving on phone. Those of you who gave on phone, you can also come receive your blessings. The word will come to pass. Now, after you've done this, the next thing to do is to follow it up with prayers. Amen. You follow it up with prayers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, can you help? Where is Deaconess Nina? Can you help to organize it for him? Uh, Deaconess, um, quickly help to put the money together for him. Just arrange it here and just give it to him. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right. Can you give us, we're supposed to have some quality time of praise and dance to the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Give Jesus praise in this house. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.